welcome to my weekly market roundup 23rd February 2020. I am Sagan Nandi. I used to work in information technology mostly based in Singapore. Now I have retired living in Thailand and swing trading stocks. I use the Q trading systems and techniques. You may watch this and other videos on my YouTube channel Trading Profitably and contact me using my email ID tradingprofitably at gmail.com. I regularly share stock and market analysis on my traders forum sagarnandi.com and also on my Twitter page sagarnandi. All these resources are open to the public and you are most welcome to make use of them. Before I begin, let me go through the disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on the trading systems and techniques I use. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. I am not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. I will have no liability for any investment decision made by the audience. As usual, in today's topics, I will analyze oil and gold using technical charts. They tend to impact related stocks and then I will demonstrate the use of the 360 degrees analysis where you can find truly high probability low risk trades by aligning forces from different levels market sector industry fundamental as well as technical levels with your trades these trades work out pretty well last week the market dropped not much if you look at a longer term chart how far it dropped significantly relative to the past two weeks. However, my trades didn't do poorly. That is because I only took trades where all the forces were aligned. And secondly, as I had talked about in the previous few market roundups, I didn't buy any stock that was already overvalued fundamentally or overbought technically. That saved my equity. I in fact made a small profit this week. I will come back to that later during this webinar. That was the last slide of my presentation. I will now continue with the live system. I am starting the commodities analysis with oil ETF USO analyzing that using the weekly backdrop chart template and daily hop on chart template together I call this at a glance template because using this single template you can decide if there is a low risk entry opportunity in only a few seconds and you can do that using the unambiguous checklists that I use for the different trade setups how many trade setups? Only four. Five if you are using breakout also as a trade setup. And all these setups are designed for different market conditions. For trend following, trend reversing, bounce that is exhaustion based trade and sideways market trade that is box setup and breakout is the five possible trade setup that you can take using this single at a glance chart template. When US oil was at this point, most of the people were bullish because of the Middle East tension at that time. However, I had suggested looking for a shorting opportunity that ended as a very profitable trade. And when price was at this level, many people were bearish. However, 
if you were following my market roundups, you know I had suggested looking for a buying opportunity. In the previous market roundup, I explained that that opportunity was on this day when price could close above the watermark support level. You could have taken the bullish trade using short put vertical. Why short put vertical? Because the implied volatility was very high and selling options would be the right choice. After that price has gone up and the bullish trade that I suggested at this point also turned out to be very profitable. What about now? Now the weekly is neutral. In color and also you can say in shape it is a hollow body that is bullish however it has an upper tail that is bearish. The color and shape both are mixed in the weekly chart. In the daily it has recovered from the recent lows. There is no low risk buying opportunity right now. There is no Q trade setup for swing trading in oil right now. We have to see where it goes next and then apply the unambiguous checklist to find our next trade. Gold ETF GLD. In the weekly chart, it ended with a very bullish shape and bullish color candle. If we look at the daily chart, in the previous market roundup, I mentioned that price was inside a range bound by watermark resistance at the top and memory support at the bottom and suggested not taking a trade until price could break out of that trend. When did the price break out? That happened on this Tuesday. If you were fond of taking breakout trades, you could then, seeing that price opened above the watermark resistance, you could switch to the fine tune intraday 10 minute or 5 minute chart template and look for a low risk buying opportunity using that template. That in fact gave a very profitable trade. You could exit partial profit on the same day if you wanted or looking at the bullishness of the daily chart at that time, you could decide to turn it into an overnight trade. And that trade ended giving much more profit this Friday. It is looking very bullish in the weekly and daily both. There is no reason to exit full position. Looking at the large gap up move on Friday, you could book at least partial profit and hold on to the remaining position with a trailing stop trying to let profit run. Let me explain to you how you could use this fine tune chart template using 10 minute interval or 5 minute interval. In the morning session, I tend to use 5 minute interval and if I am using this fine tune chart template in the afternoon session, then I use 10 minute interval. In this case, because I am trying to show the entire week's move on one screen, let me continue with the 10 minute chart interval. But keep in mind, because this Tuesday's entry was in the morning session, the actual entry would be taken using 5 minute interval. On this Tuesday, price opened at this level that was above the previous day's high, which was here. That was a gap up open. And on the daily chart, I showed you the opening was above the daily watermark resistance. Therefore, you were going to look for bullish trades. Soon after open, the early range high and early range low pivot levels were formed and then price went above early range high. Looking at that, you would take a long trade right in this bar. Your 
entry price will be somewhere here using the five minute chart interval and your stop would be just below the day's low below the early range low this should be your risk amount after that price closed higher closed at this point so you had this distance as your profit you could book partial profit as i mentioned earlier or looking at the bullishness on the daily chart you could continue to hold the position turn it into an overnight trade and after that for all the remaining days wednesday thursday friday price continued to go up and that gave you a very high reward risk ratio trade remember your risk was this much and as of friday's close here your reward ended up being this much the reward was much bigger than the risk on friday price opened with a very large gap up we don't know where it will move next week looking at the high reward reached already and the fact that it had a large gap up move on friday i would rather book partial profit and apply trailing stop on the remaining position rather than risking erosion of the entire profit after the commodities analysis i start the market level analysis that is the highest level of my 360 degrees analysis what is the aim the aim is to decide if the market is bullish if so i'm going to look for mostly long trades using stocks and if it is bearish i'm going to look for shorting opportunities let me start with the s&p 500 etf spy in the weekly chart it ended with a bearish shape and bearish color candle it also displayed a bearish headwind possible reversal signal in the daily chart price declined it is still in an uptrend supported by memory support line though on friday we have a bearish flow color candle there is no long or short opportunity in spy right now if you are looking to buy spy you may wait to see if price comes to this memory support line it is reasonable distance away from friday's close if price comes to this support line it is very likely to bounce from there because it will already be very overbought by the time price reaches the memory support that will be the right time to look for a buy setup i will not look for a buying opportunity in spy because the weekly and daily both are having bearish color and also because the weekly has displayed a bearish headwind possible reversal signal dow jones industrial average etf dia i am covering dia first before qqq this week because there are many similarities between spy and dia it also displayed a bearish headwind possible reversal signal the weekly backdrop candle color and shape both are bearish in the daily on friday you have bearish flow magenta color candle there is no opportunity to buy or short tire right now similar to spy there is a memory support in the daily chart if price comes to that level it is very likely to bounce from there at least a little bit enough to give a profitable buying opportunity probably using short put vertical now that i have shown that both spy and dia displayed bearish headwind signal on the weekly charts let me explain one of the ways i could make a profit this week instead of taking a loss this is my twitter page 
twitter.com Sagarnandi. On Tuesday, in the morning session, I shared this tweet and I attached the SPY and DIA weekly charts. This is the DIA weekly chart and this is the SPY weekly chart. I shared this right after market open on Tuesday. Tuesday was the first trading day of the week and you can see it started displaying the bearish headwind possible reversal signal from Tuesday morning session itself. And in the tweet I had explained that it was probably time to start buying insurance or protect long positions. That's exactly what I did. I took multiple insurance short meaning bearish vertical positions using this market ETFs. During the week, price fell much more and the bearish positions gave me much more profit than the small loss that I had to take on my stock long positions. That is one way I could bug the trend. I made a profit this week instead of making a loss. What was the other way? The other way was because I bought stocks that were not overvalued or overbought, my stocks didn't do too poorly in fact. None of the long stock positions stopped out this week. In fact, several of them hit the profit target. Dollar Tree was one of them, MCS was probably another. I will later review both of those trades. Now let me look at QQQ using the at a glance template. Here the weekly ended with a neutral color but bearish shape candle. The daily displayed a bearish headwind on Thursday and Friday price drop. Friday's candle has a bearish flow color. The shape is also bearish on Friday. By now you have probably started putting more focus on the bearish headwind signals. They may sometimes give bearish headwind short trade setup if there is no trade setup based on the unambiguous checklist at minimum the Q guideline is to protect your long positions apply trailing stop on long positions. Looking at the bearish headwind on QQQ on Thursday, you would do exactly same, not only in QQQ, probably in tech stocks as well. That would be useful because on Friday, QQQ dropped, but some tech stocks dropped much more. What is my view on QQQ next week? We take all the Q signals seriously. Headwind is one but not the only one. On Friday, price dropped with heavy bearish pressure. However, price closed right at the memory support line. The memory supports work pretty well. Looking at that, I am thinking that there is a high likelihood QQQ will reverse from here, at least temporarily next week. If it breaks below the memory support, there is another memory support nearby. There is no scope of taking a low risk short trade in QQQ until both of these memory supports are broken. On the other hand, if price reverses from this memory support or the next memory support, those are likely to give low risk buying opportunities. And because price fell with heavy bearish pressure on Friday, that may be a sign of exertion and there is a likelihood that price will reverse upward on Monday. If that happens using fine-tuned chart template, I may be ready to take a very low risk long trade in QQQ. 
The last market ETF that I study is IWM, Russell 2000 ETF. This was the weakest earlier and this week it actually did better. The weekly color changed to neutral, however shape is indecisive. It is not a bearish shape candle. In the daily, you can see price practically moved sideways. On Friday, the flow color is magenta, however it has a lower tail and price went up after forming the lower tail and the lows of this day and low of this day could not be breached. There is no bearish setup in IWM, there is no bullish setup as well. That concludes my market level analysis using the market ETFs. Time to make a conclusion. What is my market outlook? The SPY and DIA drop. However, for swing trading, there is no bearish trade setup. There is no bullish trade setup as well. The same is true for IWM. SPY and DIA both displayed bearish headwind signal on the weekly chart. That is stopping me to take any long trade right now. What about QQQ? QQQ displayed a bearish headwind on Thursday in the daily chart and then it dropped on Friday. This week's drop was primarily driven by the tech stocks. QQQ represents the tech stocks and QQQ stopped right at the memory support on Friday after heavy bearish pressure. That is leading me to not be too bearish on the market right now. There is a high likelihood that price will bounce up from the QQQ memory support line. And if the nearest memory support is broken, there is another memory support nearby for QQQ. If the drop was driven by tech stocks or QQQ, the memory supports in QQQ may also lead to a price reversal upward. Based on that, I am going to stick with the neutral view on the market this week. Meaning, I am not too bullish and neither am I too bearish on the market. I am holding some stock long positions. None of them got stopped out this week. I will continue to hold them as per my trading plan. About the insurance trades that I took using market ETFs, using options verticals, they gave large profit on Friday and I closed part of them already. Why did I close part of them? Because I could see the memory support that is very close to Friday's close on QQQ. Looking at that, I decided to book some of the profit most of the profit you can say on the insurance trades that I do. Currently I am holding the long stock positions that I initiated already and in fact I initiated some long stock position on Friday also. At the same time, looking at the market's bearishness, I carried out the same reliable 360 degrees analysis and I took some bearish positions in stocks also but I took them in weak fundamental stocks that are also in weak industries. I probably shared several of them on my traders forum sagarnandi.com you may keep an eye on them. They tend to work out pretty well but you can check for yourself. After the market level analysis, I carry out the next level of my 360 degrees analysis, that is the sector level analysis. Here I am looking at the 11 sectors across three review periods. Red bars represent this five days performance, not one week, because this week had four trading days, but the red bars represent last five days performance, not one week. The green bar, previous five days 
performance and the blue bars to its performance before that. Together they represent one month of sector performance. This week all the sectors except real estate went down. Which one is the worst performing sector? Information technology. This again shows that the market's drop was driven by tech stocks, what I already mentioned. Let's look at the pattern of the sector movement across the three review periods. This week, one sector was up, ten were down. Previous week, nine were up, two were down. So this is a reversal from bullishness one week ago to bearishness this week. What happened in the two weeks period before that? It was bearish. Two sectors were up, nine were down. Let's try to put that in our mind and see if there is a pattern in that. For two weeks, it went down. Then for one week, it went up. Then again, it went down for one week. Down for two weeks, up for one week, down for one week again. This is the kind of move that is going to give you lower highs and lower lows on individual stock charts and ETF charts as well. If the lower highs and lower lows give you a go with flow trade setup, that is the trend following trade setup, then you can take it more confidently because that lower high, lower low pattern on stocks or ETFs is going to match with the pattern you can visualize from the sector performance. Remember, I told you that my long stock positions didn't do badly. In fact, several of them hit the profit target. I only discussed the stocks that I shared before knowing the result in my traders forum, sakandanti.com. Let me show how some of those trades did. One was on MCS. In the traders forum you can search the topics by a symbol or any other string that you have in mind i search for mcs this was the topic i shared scrolling up i first shared it 10 days ago on 13th feb on mcs i named the topic time for some movies and entertainment because MCS is in that industry. As usual I shared the 360 degree snapshot right on that day using real time industry scorecard and heat map as of midday on 13th Feb I saw that the industry turned bullish after a long period of bearishness. From magenta color it turned into cyan right on that day and I could recognize that strengthening in real time. Also the pace column showed that it was accelerating. An industry that was weak for a long time, then it started to accelerate and became one of the strongest industries on that day. That led me to look for a buying opportunity. And I found this stock MCS Marcus Cop, MCS. Remember, I told you I bought stocks while the market was at a very high level. However, I bought undervalued stocks, not overvalued. And this was one, the valuation, secondary valuation, both were in cyan color, showing they were undervalued. So I was willing to buy the stock, provided the technical charts gave me a buy setup. And I attached the technical charts also as of that day in real time. This is how the weekly and daily charts look. That is the at a glance template. The weekly turned cyan. The backdrop color was bullish. 
the shape was also bullish in the daily it formed the w pattern that is it created higher low and higher high gave a cyan flow color candle in the daily chart that made all the requirements of the go with flow trend following long trade setup so i shared the trade idea as a trend following long trade setup additionally it also had extra reason to take the bullish trade what was that that was this extreme bullish pressure and the pendulum band indicator showed that it was at pendulum low created a reversal candle right on that day there were many bullish signals right at the pendulum low that is extremely low price level therefore i could find a stock that was not overbought technically far from that oversold it was oversold just starting to go up from pendulum low and fundamentally it was not overvalued far from that it was undervalued this were the stocks i was buying not overbought not overvalued how did mcs do i followed up 3 days ago on 20th feb i also explain using this chart how i manage my trades i bought the stock at this level i tend to mark my charts with the entry price my stop price that i decide using the q protection signal in this case the stop was also below the memory support and my initial profit target that is the level where i have about the same reward as the risk taken in the trade in this case i also set my initial profit target at a level that was just below the memory resistance because i am always watchful of all the q indicators whether it is memory line or headwind signal i take them seriously because there was a memory resistance i wanted to put my initial profit target just below that and on 20th feb right after market open 9:33 am eastern standard time it hit my profit target i tend to keep gtc order for my profit target initial profit target and the initial position was close how did mcs move later whichever way it moved i was not worried because i already booked profit but let's have a look at mcs as of friday's close this is mcs see that on friday price drop however it is not bearish because it still has a long lower tail but that was of not much concern to me because looking at the memory resistance i had already booked my profit and i have apply trailing stop on the remaining position in a way that i made the trade virtually risk free barring a gap down move the trade was virtually risk free from that time when i booked my partial profit so i am continuing to hold the remaining position with the trailing stop this trade ended with profit a bullish trade though the market came down this was not the only trade let me share one more example and again i am going to share only examples that i published earlier in my traders forum before knowing the result there are many more trades that i shared on the traders forum let me cover one more that closed with profit this way that was on dollar tree i named that topic dollars from a tree on dollar tree dltr i shared it 11 days ago on 12th feb and as usual i attached the snapshots 360 degrees analysis snapshots the industry scorecard and heat map showed general merchandise stores the industry of dollar tree 
was very weak magenta before and it was starting to turn cyan in the recent periods and the paste column here showed that it was accelerating as well so the industry in real time this was on 12th feb as of about 1 30 pm eastern standard time the industry told me that i could look for a stock to buy because the industry was weak for a long time i was expecting to buy the stock at a low price level and i was also expecting to buy a stock that was not fundamentally overvalued then i found dollar tree dltr on that day in the pr group industry pr group 10 stocks were up two were down so the industry overall was doing great in terms of valuation it was medium valued valuation in yellow color earnings growth was negative for three quarters i expected that why because the industry was weak for a long time i expected many stocks would also be weak in terms of earnings growth for a long period however in the yearly periods three year CAGR compound aggregate growth rate of earnings three year two year one year all were positive and in terms of revenue the quarterly periods as well as the yearly periods were positive so i had some reason to look for a buying opportunity provided the stock was at a very low price level then i looked at the technical charts and this is what i attached in the weekly chart it had dropped sharply created two watermark support levels price tried to go below the second watermark support created an indecisive doji candle and right on the day when i shared the trade idea it had moved above the second watermark level creating what i call a false downside breakout the weekly backdrop color turned cyan bullish the shape was also bullish while that was happening in the weekly chart in the daily price tried to go below this watermark support then recovered above the same watermark level creating again a false downside breakout and right on that day the flow candle color turned bullish and it broke above the memory resistance while price was at pendulum or price extreme low that gave me a valid breakout long trade setup i could place the stop using q protection signal but i would put it just below the memory support level and i would try to book partial profit once the risk distance was covered that was a breakout setup that I shared on DLTR. Remember the last trade that I showed you on MCS, that was a trend following. Go with flow, long trade setup. Some people are comfortable taking only trend following trades. Some like to take breakout trades. However, I'm comfortable taking both. Plus, I'm comfortable taking headwind reversal trades, bounce exertion based trades, and also box sideways market trades. You will find examples of all these setups in my traders forum. This was what I shared on DLTR just as I identified the trade using my real time tools. All my tools are in real time. How did it work out? Let's look at the forum post. I followed up the trade three days ago on Feb 20 and this is how the chart looked at that time again you can see I had marked my charts this was my stop level I took the trade at this point and when price came here it had already covered my risk distance I had a GTC order placed and partial profit was booked that was good because I can see there is a memory resistance nearby. Now, after I booked profit, whether it went up 
and broke the memory resistance or refers from the memory resistance was not much of a concern to me because I already booked partial profit and applied trailing stop on remaining position in a way that the entire trade is risk free, virtually risk free, barring a gap down move. Now have a look at the weekly chart. I could buy DLTR right on this candle when the backdrop candle color turned cyan and it created a false breakout. Now price has gone up. Now probably some people are going to notice the stock. But I am way ahead of them. I have already booked partial profit. Where is my next profit target? I have also drawn that, marked it up on the chart here. If price continues to go up from here, I'm going to move my trailing stop up and if it hits this price target, I'm going to book some more profit. That is how I can often buy stocks well ahead of others and book profit when probably others are noticing. When others are thinking of taking the trade, I have already booked profit on partial position and applied trailing stop on remaining position to make it a risk-free trade. Let's look at the same stock dollar tree as of Friday's market close. I booked partial profit on Thursday. On Friday, the market dropped heavily, you may say whereas DLTR went up further. It is right at the memory resistance that I knew was already there. The weekly became even more bullish. Once again, you can see that I could buy the stock way ahead of others and there is no reason to exit full position. I am continuing to hold partial position trying to let profit run. I showed you two trades, long trades, that closed at least partial position with profit this week. Remember I told that even on Friday I bought some stocks, this is one of them, Jailin, G-I-L-D. Why did I buy it? The stock was looking bullish and remember I showed that QQQ was near a memory support and I think there is a likelihood, not guaranteed, but likelihood that QQQ will reverse. On Friday market went down but this stock Jailit went up. If the market goes up, I am expecting Jailit to go up even more. I titled the topic on Jailit, May Jailit have some medicine for coronavirus, the COVID-19 virus that has created an epidemic in China and seems to be turning into a pandemic. I mentioned that, but one thing I want to point out, my trades don't rely on whether Jailid is going to make a medicine or not. In fact, my trades don't depend on whether there is Middle East tension, doesn't depend on the election that is going to happen. Doesn't depend on many of the news articles that other traders tend to discuss. In fact, if you notice my forum posts on trades or the videos, including this video, I don't talk about subjective news, however intelligent they may sound. I have very precise rules for taking a trade and those rules are also unambiguous. I cannot make a rule that is unambiguous and still talk about election result, Middle East tension and what not. I try to avoid that. In fact, I call this Q systems. The U stands for unambiguousness. I added the line that Jailid may be creating some medicine for coronavirus. Many people are trying, Jailid is also trying. But remember, that is not a requirement for me to take a trade. What is my requirement? To have a 360 degrees analysis that is looking at different levels and aligned forces with the trade 
if they all line up or most of them line up I take the train and the technicals must fall into one of the trade setups that I have I attach the snapshots again in real time this is how Jailid was looking when I shared the idea earlier it was declining then on this candle that was the earnings week price gapped up after that for one week it moved sideways you may say it was an inside candle and when I shared the trade idea the weekly candle shape turned bullish again both a hollow body and also a long lower tail and the backdrop candle color was continuing to be bullish sign how did the daily look daily created higher high and right at the time I shared it it created a higher low also the flow candle color turned cyan and it also was breaking out of the memory resistance if you applied the Q trade unambiguous checklist you would see it gave both a go with flow trend following long trade setup and also a breakout long trade setup so the technicals were looking quite strong and remember this was on Friday when the market was down heavily that gave me even more confidence to buy the stock let me see the other 360 degrees analysis snapshots that I share the fundamentals remember I mentioned I was ready to buy stocks when the market was at a very high level but I was not willing to buy fundamentally overvalued stocks this was not overvalued this was opposite undervalued both in terms of valuation also secondary valuation and you can know that from the cyan color only it was undervalued stock technically it was looking great did I attach the industry snapshot the industry snapshot biotech industry was mixed neither bullish nor bearish but biotechs can move on its own strength so overall I concluded it could be a good buy setup both as a trend following long trade as well as a breakout long trade in a stock that is undervalued that was my unambiguous criteria how did the stock ended Friday let's look at the live charts now as of Friday's close on Friday the weekly close to it a very bullish shape and the daily went up even more since I shared the idea this is simply broke above the memory resistance confirming both the breakout trade setup as well as go with flow long trade setup this is another stock that I bought on Friday and I again only discuss stocks that I shared in the forum before knowing the result Jaili was one of them I am continuing to hold it we'll see how the trade works out I don't know how a particular trade will work out but I have the confidence to share the possible trade ideas beforehand before knowing the result based on the very robust systems and techniques that I use I have full confidence on them that's why I am able to share them with the public month after month year after year before knowing the results let me summarize the market was down this week the sectors were also bearish many people ended the week with a loss but I ended the week with a profit and I could do that for two reasons one I could identify the bearish headwind signal that appeared on Tuesday that was the first trading day of the week that to in the morning session the bearish headwind appeared both in SPY and DIA weekly charts and looking at that I had bought some insurance using options particles on the market ETFs they resulted in a significant profit and I booked 
most of the profit on Friday. Why did I do that? Because I saw QQQ that drove the market down was right at the memory support. The other reason I didn't have to take a loss this week is because when the market was at a high level, as I mentioned in the previous market roundups, I was not going to buy high growth stocks. I was buying stocks that were undervalued. They did pretty well. None of them were stopped out. In fact, several of them hit the profit target. And on Friday, again, I bought some undervalued stocks. Childit was one of them. These examples that I share regularly on my traders forum and Twitter page based on real-time analysis demonstrate that if you use a disciplined approach, not based on news, not based on subjective criteria, but very disciplined approach. In my case, I align forces from multiple levels, sector industry, fundamental and technical levels with my trades. If you follow such an approach and manage your money properly, and manage the risk properly in terms of stop and profit target. Whatever be the market condition, overall, you can probably end your account with a profit. I tend to say that if you are disciplined and if you have a robust system, then it is hard to lose money in the market. But neither of those requirements are trivial. Having a robust system on which you have confidence is not trivial and being disciplined is not trivial at all. You have probably figured that out already by yourself, haven't you? That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in my next session. Have a great week and trade profitably. There is no reason not to do so.